want to tell you another story. This is a personal story um, about my, my dad. On his um, 70th uh, birthday, he actually went into cardiac arrest. And the, the ambulance was late in getting there. Eventually, he got to the, uh, he got to the emergency room at, at a local hospital. It's a, obviously a very grave situation, uh, full of emotion and distress. Um, I was you know, waiting in the waiting room with a, lot, with a lot of the friends and family that was there at, at the party. And eventually, a resident came out and said, you know, your, uh, uh, your dad is uh, brain dead. And um, you know, you're going to have to sign a, a do not resuscitate. And so as I'm sitting there trying to sort of just manage my emotions, which is many years ago, and you could, you could hear my emotions still you know, raging on this, um, I dare to ask why. Why do you think he's brain dead? How do you know he's brain dead? And the answer was essentially, look, uh, there are a lot of variables, uh, you know, uh, prior history, uh, how, long, uh, how long the ambulance took to get there, uh, you know, whether his pupils were dilated, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And statistically speaking, you know, there's an 88, whatever it is, percent chance that he's brain dead. So please sign the do not resuscitate. And, you know, being the person I am, I, I sat there and I said, well, wait a second. I mean, that's statistical evidence. And what I need is deductive, logical evidence that that person sitting on that table right now, now they're doing all heroic measures to try to, try to keep him alive, thinking that he's brain dead, um, heart's still beating, they're keeping it beating with defibrillators and that kind of thing. How do I actually know? I mean, how do I know my dad is, I understand your average statistic that you trained over lots of people, you have a few variables in there, maybe 100, I don't know, but why do you know deductively why he's brain dead? And the answer was, you need to speak to the chief cardiologist. And so the chief cardiologist came out, a very similar story. I said, look, I need to, I need to know. And they said, well, keep, to keep him alive, if you refuse to sign the do not resuscitate, to keep him alive, I have a bunch of decisions that you're, you're, you know, you're going to need to make. So I had to reason through every urgent treatment decision, from whether or not to move him to a, a different hospital, what drugs to give him, because the, the belief was, you know, he, he's dead. So we're just wasting our time. So now, and so I would ask a ton of questions, and I, would, I made one decision after another. Long story short, about 18 to 20 hours later, my father was sitting up in bed, zero brain damage. How you doing, Dave? I understand you thought I was dead, he said to me. Right, so this is the, the, the culture clash in a nutshell. Right? Are we entitled to explanations for the decisions that the statistically trained AI is making for us? How do we engage as, as these really powerful capabilities play a bigger, bigger role, a bigger and bigger role in our, in our lives and in our culture. So I step back for a minute. I mean, another common experience you may all have is this, is like, you know, this kid barraging you, pummeling you, you know, with the barrage of why, why, mommy, why, daddy, why, why? So you're trying to teach something, you tell something to your kid, but why, but why, but why? I think you should rejoice when your kids pummel you with these whys. Because I think what's going on is something very unique and something about establishing that shared understanding with the parent and with the teacher and with the culture and the society around. The child is not satisfied with just patterns of right and wrong answers on the surface. They're pushing the limits of their understanding. They know what they don't know. They're saying, you know, you know what, My, it's, it's just not complete yet. I don't have a coherent model. It's not connecting logically. So they're saying, why? I'm still missing something. Why? I'm still missing something. And I think that's a really tremendous inspiration for something that I'm really excited about, which I call natural learning.